Okay, friends, uh, I want to show you something. Today, in this bag, I've got some wax comb, quite a bit actually. T take a look at this. So this is some old brood comb. And uh, this came from uh, a family member of mine. Uh, they have a beehive and they're just starting off. They're just trying to learn the ropes. Uh, things didn't quite go as planned and their bees didn't make it. I think they absconded because of hive beetles. Um, and I don't think they knew that they could save this wax. So they tore it all out of their hive and uh, told me I could have it if I want it. So this is what, this is what wax moth does when they get in. And I've got to do something with this wax right away. I, I want to melt it so it doesn't go to waste to the wax moths because they will eat every single bit of this. So uh, Dr. Leo uh, mentioned a little trick that you can do to melt wax quickly and that is you can um, put it into a, a five gallon pail with some boiling water and tie it in a uh, like a sack and that's what I've got here. I've got a pillowcase, an old pillowcase and I'm going to tie it off and I'm going to put the boiling water in and let's see how well it works. This is the first time I've ever done it like this. So I've got to do something with it and I just hate the thought of it going to complete waste because it's good clean wax. No chemical treatments of any kind um, so we don't have to worry about any of that toxic stuff being in this wax. Now it's pretty bulky. Now if I look at it next to the five gallon pail it looks like it's too big. It might be. I don't know. I'm going to try to squish it down and I'm sure that when it melts, mush on it a little bit, take out all my anger. <laughs> I'm going to crunch this wax down and uh, see if I can get it to melt. And it's supposed to go right through. Now you're not supposed to be your, your block and so we can't teach anybody now. You have to move over. Why don't you move over? Come on over here. Stand over here. Come here. Come on over here. There you go. Good boy. Okay, he's gonna have to get his own YouTube channel. So I'm gonna crunch it down and then I've got some uh, two pots of water boiling on the stove right now. And I told my wife I wouldn't do it in the house and I wouldn't put any of this in her pots. So I highly recommend um, you folks out there don't use your significant other's good cookingware to do this with. I've got a five gallon white pail that I use for beekeeping stuff and it's perfectly perfectly fine for doing what we're going to do today. So I'm crunching this up and it's starting to look like it's going to fit in the bucket. So that's good. And I think by the time it all melts I might get one brick worth of wax out of it. We'll see. Um, it doesn't feel that heavy. I think it weighs maybe maybe two or three pounds. So hopefully I'll have the same kind of success that I think I'm going to have, like Dr. Leo mentioned, that it'll melt through the fabric. There's no holes in the bag that I can see. So hopefully the, all the wax will melt through the fabric and float up to the top. And I'll just let this sit outside overnight and cool off. But I already see some wax moth caterpillars. I'm going to show you those. I must have uh, squeezed them out. So there they are. Where is he? Where is he? There. All right, there's a wax moth caterpillar that just fell out. And I'm gonna give it to my chickens. Okay, here chickies. So let's see if my chickens will get this. There it goes, all right, perfect. Oh, there goes another one. They're, they're finding the wax moths. Good girls. They always know they're going to get some kind of treat when I'm around. They associate me with food. So they wanted to check out and see what I was doing here. And they got some wax moth. So I'll tie this off. I just want to crunch it down a little more. Get it nice and compact so that I can pour that boiling water. Uh, I don't know, what, you want another wax moth? Let's see, I might have one. 
Here, here's a wax moth. There you go. Boy, they love me for that. Let's see if I can get some more. This is fun. All right, the rest are gonna get cooked. Nice and tight. We'll cram it in this bucket. There it goes. Okay, it fits good. So, there it is. It's kind of down in there about halfway. That ought to give me enough room to pour that boiling water over it. And um, it'll all melt and float up to the top. And I should, hopefully, have good clean wax after that process is complete. And I got my, got my shovel here to stir it up with. Push it in there. So let's go see if the water's ready. Well, I've got my two pots of boiling water. So I'm going to move the camera so I can point it down into the bucket and hopefully we'll be able to see this in action of the wax melting and going through the, uh, the uh, cloth and floating to the top. I'm not sure if we're going to see that or not, but that's what I'm hoping for. Let's do it. Okay, pour the first one in. All right, the heat, the heat made the air inside the bag expand. So I'm gonna have to push that down with my shovel now. Let's see if I can get that air to. If it behaves the way I think it will, even though I've got dirt on my shovel, when the wax melts and goes to the top, it should still remain separate from the dirt. In other words, it'll have some dirt on the wax, but maybe just on the bottom layer. The dirt should be heavier than the wax. Almost got myself. All right, I squeeze that air out. I might have to put a rock on this hold this down. All right. A few rocks that I found and they have dirt on them. This was not a planned video. So I didn't clean these rocks first. Get that to stay on top of that. There it goes. All right. I just want to keep keep that submerged. And I do see the wax. I'm sure you can too. Right here, this yellow. So the wax and the dirt should separate. And we'll just leave that there now till morning. So here's our wax the next morning. I'm gonna just quick give it a little shake here. There's our wax floating right on top. So let me just uh, zoom out just for a second. Maybe I can show you this a little better. So it's floating right on top. And there it is. That's all the wax <laughs> from that big bag. It's all floated to the top, but look at that. It's not too bad, even despite the dirty shovel and everything else. Water is dirty, but this is the, about as clean as I can get it. Um, I could melt it one more time and make sure there's no dirt on the uh, instruments that I'm using. Here's a little bit of dirt. It's right on the underside right here. But it's pretty nice, actually. Now here's something else that I like to do with my wax that you might want to do too. You've probably heard that you can freeze your wax and that's a really good idea because 
What you can do is you can take all the comb, I'm going to show you. This is comb that I've already run through the extractor. Now, it doesn't matter if you have an extractor or not. Here's the point. If you have comb that's empty, you can just save it for next year. And it's really easy to store. I like to store mine in plastic, um, like a plastic bag. I actually put it back into the uh, hive bodies, like you see here. I've got a five frame nuke and I've got five frames of comb in there. And I'm gonna just simply wrap a garbage bag around that. But before I do, I like to freeze it for about 24 to 48 hours. So um, if you do that, that'll save a lot of energy and resources from your bees having to go and forage to find the sugar, to find the nectar in order to make the wax for next year. So freezing is a really good idea because what it'll do is it'll kill the hive beetles It'll kill wax moths, whether they're egg stage or even larva stage. Sometimes you see them, sometimes you don't. So that's why freezing is such a good idea. And if you really want to play it safe, do the full 48 hours, and that should take care of it. I've done mine in as, in as little as 24 hours, and it's worked out really well. But I've got a lot of comb. I've got about 30 frames of comb. And because there's food in the freezer, I, don't, I can't load it. <laughs> which is really a good thing if you think about it. It's always nice to have food at home. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna freeze about, uh, I think I can fit seven frames at a time. And I've got about 30 frames that I wanna save, um, not including, actually I've got about, probably closer to 40. I've got about 40 frames, because I've got some that are Langstroth frames like these. And then I've got my new favorite, uh, the Layens frames. And this is only a year old. So I can use this next year. You can tell that it's got the, the brood comb marking because it's dark. But because it's only a year old, I'm gonna keep using it for next year. I could put this uh, one frame into a swarm trap that I can go hang somewhere. So it, it doesn't look like there's any wax moth or beetles, but those, um, those bugs are hard to find. So just to be on the safe side, because I've wrapped up stuff that looks clean with a visual inspection and then come back in the spring only to find it completely disintegrated and eaten up by wax moths. So it's always best to just go ahead, freeze it, and that way you know um, that it's gonna be good for next year. So freezing is a real good idea, and then storing and then storing that comb in a nice, nice tight plastic container uh, or anything else. Uh, sometimes I'll even use cedar shavings. I'll put, um, I'll put cedar shavings in these little hive bodies, uh, sprinkled around all the wax, and that's a good idea too, because moths don't care for that too much. One thing that you want to keep in mind when it comes to freezing your wax is, once it's frozen and you take it out of the freezer, be really careful with it. Because if you bump it, um, or just even tap it just a little too hard, it will crack and shatter just like glass. And if you drop it, it's gone. It, it will shatter in, in a thousand pieces. So when you first take your wax out of the freezer, um, just handle it very gently and let it, uh, um, let it go up to room temperature before you really do too much handling of it. So I always just take mine out. In fact, that's what these are right here. I just took out these, uh, I've got seven frames that I just froze and I just took them out of the freezer about 15 minutes ago. So I'm just gonna let them come up to room temperature and then I'm gonna come back in maybe an hour or two and I'm gonna wrap these in some plastic trash bags just to make sure that no moths get in them. But you don't wanna leave them sit. Um, I, I don't wanna let them sit for maybe a day or two because wax moth can find them again even after you froze them. So after the freezing process, just let them come up to room temperature and when they do, then you can wrap them up. And I, I like to wait till they're at room temperature so I don't get any moisture and condensation after I put them in a plastic container. I don't want that because then they would get all moldy, okay? So um, that's just a, an important thing about freezing. So anyway, um, I, hope that the, I hope that these tips help. So you can either melt your wax um, if it's really beyond you know, salvage, but anything that's in good shape um, anything that you can save for your bees should translate into more honey for harvest next year. And that'll give your bees a nice good start. So I hope you like these videos. Um, give me a like and a
thumbs up and subscribe and all that good stuff. And we'll see you at the next one. Take care, friends.